Last summer I treated some corrosion on the rear of my car underneath the crash bar. Then, more recently, I've shown you how I've undersealed the whole underside of my car and in my quest for perfection I finally decided to combat some aluminium corrosion that's been bothering me for some time. Good morning and welcome to another video. So today is actually, I'm really enjoying filming these videos. It's not really restoration of my car, but it's getting it as tip top condition as it can be. If you know your MX-5, there's a lot of aluminium panels on it. Aluminium doesn't really rust in the same way that steel does, but I'm gonna sort this little bit of oxidization out underneath my boot lid. And a lot of UK cars have this because I think it's where the rainwater drips down and collects just underneath where the lights are. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's have a look. Ooh, let's have a cup of tea. There's a, a little bit of oxidation here, a little bit starting to form here as well. Now, like I said, this has been on the car for a very, very long time. In one of my first videos, I picked up on this. Taking an even closer look right now, I can see that there's actually, I don't know if you can see that, some water droplets under here, almost like condensation. So I reckon that condensation is also sticking to the underside of this boot lid. And obviously we're in a dry, relatively warm garage right now. So even if this car is being stored inside, there is some condensation forming under here. But weirdly, for some reason, this side is completely unaffected. Please remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and turn all your notifications on so that you'll never miss my videos. By now, I've got into the habit of disconnecting the negative battery terminal before working on the car, which will isolate the car from any short circuits. And this is done really easily with an 11 millimeter spanner. One of my pet hates is panel alignment and trying to get it bang on. I didn't have any feeler gauges with me and so I decided to draw around the boot hinges allowing me to line up the boot and hopefully have a much easier reinstallation after I'd finished this process. There's only one connector that needs removing. This is the power to the number plate lights and it's located inside the boot. I think that this would ordinarily be hidden behind the boot trim and the fuel filler net guard but as these were both already removed from my car the access was really easy and straightforward. The cable has a small retaining clip which stops it from getting trapped in the boot hinge and this just pulls straight out. Next we need to remove the gas band from the gas strut and uh, these can ping off. And now the gas struts should just unclip from the boot hinges. The gas struts don't actually need to be removed for this process, but I just found it easier to remove them as it takes 30 seconds and gives me much better access for my ratchet. The design is quite good as it allows you to remove all four nuts without the boot falling off as it uses nuts on studs and not bolts into captive nuts on the boot lid. Now the boot needs to be removed, which is much easier with two people. If you know me on my channel, you'll know I'm always fascinated with how much things weigh on the NC, so I took this opportunity to weigh the boot lid. Four point, four point one nine. Now that the boot is off the car, I can begin working on it. First thing to do is to remove all of the parts that are in the way. This includes the two number plate lights and the blanking plate. These are slotted in and can be quite tricky to remove, as with any plastic clip into a metal surface. As I was removing the blanking plate, lots of the paint started flaking off in this area. I decided not to remove the wiring harness as I could move it out the way and cover it up so that it wouldn't get covered with paint. I also found it really interesting to see that the hinges and most likely the whole of the boot is painted after it has been mounted to the car. The evidence is here behind the boot hinges which are still bare metal. Next I removed all of the loose and flaking paint from the boot lid using a scotch bright pad. This was a really satisfying job, albeit a bit messy. I purchased a kit from Amazon that allows me to attach different grades of sanding pad onto the end of my drill, massively reducing the amount of time needed as I didn't actually need to hand sand anything. I started off with a 240 grit sandpaper, utilizing a small foam pad that came in the kit. I thought that this would allow movement of the pad over the contours underneath the boot lid and therefore create a better finish. I started sanding down the corrosion until I could see no surface pitting on the underside of the boot. I set the drill on its lowest RPM around 500. All in all, this process took about 60 minutes. Here's what it looks like after the Scotch Sprite and here's what it looks like after the 240 grit. As with any paint process, you know, the, the best finishes are made by the best preparation, what do they say? Summer bodies are made in the winter. 
Okay, so that is the 240 grit done. Here's the finish. Somehow it's gone completely dark outside in the process. Now I actually went through the foam, which was interesting because it worked, apart from when it got sucked into these holes here. It wedged itself in there and then it cut into the foam. So the foam almost completely disintegrated. I had to switch back to just on the plastic pad, uh, but that seems to work quite well. So. I went through three 240 grits doing this. So now the 240's done, I'm gonna put on a, a P400, do the whole process again, and just get it really nice and smooth. You can see that all the pitting has completely gone, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, and the more you look at it and feel it with your finger, the more little pieces you find. Um, so yeah, those have, those have completely gone now. 400. I'm also gonna go for a slightly higher speed. So this was the first one, and this is the second. Next was to mask off all the areas that I didn't want to prime and paint. I used some painter's tape that I had left over from uh, renovating the house, along with some very thin dust sheets that I cut down to size. Okay, so we've got a makeshift spray booth set up here. It consists of an old blanket on the wall, uh, a piece of fireproof plasterboard stood on an old workbench with some sheet over it, and a heater down here to make sure it gets nice and warm in here. So now I'm gonna place the boot, which is completely covered now, apart from the piece that I wanna paint, which is just here. So I've used this like thin uh, plastic sheet, lots of tape. Uh, it's not very pretty, but it absolutely does the job. What I'm gonna do now is I've gotta clean this area, make sure there's no grease and dirt or anything on it and um, then I can get to priming it. Now you really want a surface cleaner on this, but me having not learned from my last video and I didn't buy any alcohol, I'm gonna use white spirit. What am I using today? I'm using E-Tech Technic Self Etch Primer. Um, aluminium is quite a difficult material to get paint to stick to, especially when you're using like aerosol products like these. So I think it has like a, a chemical reaction with the metal on the surface to make sure that it has like a firm bond with the paint that sticks to it. I'm not really sure on the chemistry how it works, but um, yeah, you gotta do it. Follow the instructions on the tin. This is shake vigorously for two minutes. That's, a, that's the first coat done. Start the timer off. I'm gonna stick the heater back on. So that's been 20 minutes now. Uh, I'm just gonna check if it's tacky and then I can put another coat on. So you can actually see how thin a coat I've done. You can still see the red paint underneath the primer. I think with painting, it's always better to do multiple thin coats than it is to do fewer thick coats. So I'm gonna do another thin coat and then uh, we'll see what it looks like after that. Okay, boys and girls, it's over 24 hours later and here is what it looks like after the two coats of Etch Primer. So I've just been doing a lot of reading and I'm gonna not sand it. So Etch Primer is basically giving the primer a good base to stick to. So I'm gonna use a high build filler primer over this, the same as what I did with the, um, the roll hoop garnishes because I know I can get a really nice smooth finish on that. So I'm gonna spray this with the high build, sand it back down, and then after two coats of the high build, apply the top coat. Okay, so I've let the two coats of filler primer dry and I'm using uh, 800 grit to sand this down. Um, it's coming out pretty smooth so far compared to the non-sanded surface. And then I've jumped from 800 straight to 2000, which is probably a little bit too big of a jump. It's all nice and smooth. Uh, I'm actually probably gonna peel this off so that I can get an even finish between the old red and the new red. Obviously I'm not going to spray the red with this line here because it'll be a very hard line and be very difficult to blend. The biggest difficulty I've had is this line here. I think if I was going to do this again I'd roll the tape over in the corners like that so I didn't have such a harsh line here. Um, so that's something I'd recommend if you're doing this. I managed to get rid of that line though with the 2000 grit sandpaper and a little bit of water and uh, I'm, I'm basically doing it by feel and there is absolutely Absolutely no ridge although you can see a difference there is no ridge uh, when you feel it it has taken a little bit of the old paint off there but I'm not too worried about that I'd actually say that this new paint finish is probably better than the original Mazda applied paint finish uh, but overall I think hopefully it'll look pretty good once the uh, first coat of red is on everything is prepared I've taken the tape off the bottom side is taped up still um, so that no overspray gets on the underside of it I'm gonna do the first coat of red I hope it goes on okay the surface, although it looks uneven, there's lots of sanding has gone into that. It's absolutely buttery smooth. I'd say there's probably about 
two and a half to three hours of sanding prep after I've uh, sprayed the two coats of primer gone into that. Let's coat the clear lacquer going on. Okay, and here is the end result. I've got to say, I'm pretty pleased with it. All in all, it took me about seven days doing it in the evenings after work. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I could honestly spend probably about three weeks getting this right. Even now, I want to polish the duller looking paint and get the blend right. This paint is still soft. I was planning to go and take it for a drive and show you in some good light, but in all honesty, I'm not gonna close this boot lid because it's gonna touch this rubber seal here. And I don't want it to touch this rubber seal because again, that's gonna add pressure on the paint. So I hope that you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, and I'd love to know whether you would try this on your car or if you're going to try this, if you feel inspired after watching this video. Let me know if you think I could have done anything differently. Thanks to all the previous commenters that um, replied to my last video telling me how I could improve my processes. All of the links for the products that I used in this are down below in the description box. Thank you very much for watching. Righty tighty. Lefty Lucy and I hope to see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>